The original uh, interview and video that I posted uh, was because the man in question, the Trump Tower climber, I'll call him, um, had gotten a hold of me through a mutual acquaintance and asked me to post a video of him uh, in an attempt to have Donald Trump give him his final payment for what he was promised. I'm feeling really bad about something I did after our friend showed me the videos of Trump Tower. Uh, I mentioned them along with uh, another video I thought was quite funny. Uh, I'm the only one laughing, I guess. Uh, but uh, he had wanted me to keep it to myself, and I didn't. It seems our friend would use a series of drop boxes across the country where a middleman would leave messages and requests for his services. He went to his New York drop box expecting to get a response from the Trump Organization about the money he was still owed. But instead, he got a one-word message. Run! He later found out that his New York middleman, Hector Gonzalez, had been found in an abandoned building in North Carolina, tied to a chair, drugged and tortured, is now very much dead. He closed down all his other locations across the country and posted his last video to my site. The title of the video was The Real Fake News. I think a bit of tongue-in-cheek there. Our friend had a bolt hole small aircraft had witnessed a huge explosion in a remote area, which led to an investigation. He found a destroyed cabin deep in the wilderness. There were five such footprints all over the wreckage, along the trail where the quad had broken. He found the quad submerged in a deep section of the river, what looked like a boat marge. After retracing the steps of the pursuers back to the cabin and searching further, they found a surveillance surveillance setup that had given him a 10 minute head start. He got another 30 minutes for the quad tracking and another 45 minutes to get to the other tributary where he had moored his boat. I was following, following his trail, trail far behind the others ahead of me. He had booby trapped the cabin to take them out but it was thought that they had used RPGs. So his booby trap was to no avail, except to alert the aircraft that was flying overhead. Whoever they were, they were good. Nobody knew what he looked like, what his name was, out of dozens he had used in various guises. So how had they managed to track him down? Nobody seemed to know that either. But one thing was sure. He was gone, like a Shyamalan. Slipped into a new persona. In a small rooming house in Atlanta room, they found all his clothing, even his boots, all burned. They ditched everything, convinced that there was a tracking device hidden somewhere on him. They found five different colors of hair dye, barber equipment, and 17 different hair samples. There's no prints and no other DNA traces. Our friend had never used a social security number, not wanting to leave a trail. But he had a few of these numbers in reserve, according to my source. One of these numbers got the attention of the government. It was connected to a welder mechanic working in an industrial area of Atlanta. 
having not been used for 51 years, the regulators jumped on it. And they began to investigate. And that led to the next threat in my investigation. I tracked our friend to this industrial area here and I went into the yard and talked to the manager. Uh, he was reluctant to uh, give an interview and he didn't want anything to do with it. I come to find out that uh, our friend was a part-timer owner and uh, he had been missing for four days. He hadn't showed up at all to work and uh, around the same time a body was found right here. outside the yard, badly beaten, mutilated, and burned. The Atlanta police speculate that uh, it was a hit by the Russian mob. Now what that has to do with our friend, I don't know. But alas, uh, he was a nice man. He uh, was prone to exaggeration, he liked to brag about himself, uh, but he was a fairly uh, dedicated man to finding out the truth. Uh, he refused to uh, fabricate anything for uh, the Trump Organization about Hillary Clinton. He found no uh, evidence of uh, any wrongdoing, uh, and he was honest. Um, and he came to a sad end. I backtracked to my offices here in New York. I set about shutting down my whole operation and heading back over the border. Just as I was about to leave, there was a note shoved under the door. And it said, A O K F. W.H. I was delighted. My friend was not dead. I couldn't believe it. Where's the last place anybody had looked for him? At the White House. He's probably living under Donald Trump's bed, living off cheeseburgers and coke, or hiding in the box spring, or working in the kitchen, or the garden. Pay your bills, Donnie boy. He's pissed and he's in your house. In light of the events that have happened, I will not be crossing the border again, ever. I feel safe enough because I've seen the uh, information, uh, but as far as I know, uh, other than the FBI, which I hope got the information. It's m gotta go. Quick, upload it. Upload it. Up the back door. <laughs>